Welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Fan Club Podcast. I am your host, Kimberly Wimborn, also founder of Coffee and Collaborations Media. Coffee and Collaborations Media, who is now celebrating its third anniversary, April is our three-year anniversary, so I'm absolutely excited. I'm also excited because April is also Financial Literacy Month. April is a month where I get to kind of continue to wear my hat of certified financial education instructor and financial win strategist and overall win strategist and get to also bring on some powerful and dynamic guests who can add value to how you can grow your revenue by scaling your business, by focusing on transformative leadership, by understanding the value of understanding your tax bracket, all of these different things that many times as entrepreneurs, we don't understand and so we don't implement. But how many people have ever heard the saying, when you know better, you do better? Well, let's hope that we can provide tools for you to know better so that you can do better. That's what this is all about. Coffee and Collaborations not only houses the Ultimate Fan Club podcast, but it also houses Thank God is Fashion Friday, which is every Friday at 9 p.m. on YouTube Live, as well as Facebook Live. It also houses the Love and Flow TV show, which airs once a month, usually every third or fourth Saturday at 7 p.m. So I'm excited about our anniversary. I'm excited about uh, Financial Literacy Month and what's ahead. I have some surprises in store for you all who watch, as well as my company is launching some new things. And so, but the guest today, that's even more exciting, if you can believe it. I have just recently met her. She moved to the area, not to, you know, from the area, moved back. You all know that story. And <laughs> has been just on fire since she got here. And so she is, okay, you guys always hear me talk about systems and processes and things that we need to do systematically, strategically, all of that in order to win, right? Well, she's going to help us with that today. And I'm going to have a conversation with Cleidra Gross. So let's bring her on in, okay? Welcome. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And congratulations on three years of incredible work. So I, I love you. that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm excited because not only do I get to bring you on as a boss, a leader, uh, the founder and owner of CEO of Next Level Life and Business, but I also get to bring you on as one of my new friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know yes. Friends Accountability Network. That's the fan club. <laughs> fan is an acronym for Friends Accountability Network Love because it. I believe that everyone that I meet I am, I, so you guys know that I am spiritual and I ask mm -hmm. the Lord to bring mm -hmm. people into my life that will help me to get to the next level, but that can mm -hmm. also be a resource for you, those who follow me, mm -hmm. those who glean from the things that I do. And he began to place me in the direction of people who were leaders, who mm -hmm. were doing amazing things in their businesses and helping others to do the same. And Cleidra is one of those people. So tell us all a little bit about what you do, what your business is about. Simply Next Level Life and Business is about helping service-based female entrepreneurs make more money and have a better life. Yeah. I believe they both go together. So snap, snap, <laughs> snap, poetry. Wasn't that poetic? It's simple too. It's simple. simple. Yeah. Simple. You yeah. got to be simple, right? Yeah. How did you, okay, this is a valuable question. You specifically named who? You were able yes. to name kind of your mission right away, right? So mm -hmm. how did you get to the place where you understood who your target was? You know, it was really by trial and error. Mm -hmm. And it was not knowing who the target was and attracting the wrong um, client yeah. that led me to refining it so I would attract the women that I enjoy working with. Similar yeah. to you, I work with women who want to give back and, and want to make this world a better place, not just 
a, you know, money for money's sake. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's your background? Tell us a little bit about your background because I, so I love a backstory because we all have this amazing story that helps us to get to where we are, the ups, the downs and the growth opportunities. So tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. I am, you know, my husband says type triple A. I'm very driven, <laughs> uh, <laughs> controlling, and um, have always been that check the box kind of woman. My background's chemical engineering and was in tw- um, corporate America 21 years. And then life just unraveled for me in my late 30s. My marriage unraveled, my dream of becoming a mom unraveled. And that's when um, life coaching came into my life. Similar to what you said, it's amazing how God will put who and what you need yeah. when you need it. And um, the executive uh, board that I was on in corporate at the time, they invited a life coach in to speak. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is life coaching? And, and I'm like, I, I have to have more of that. Yeah, because I just love the idea of experiencing life at a better level, which is fast forward why I combine life and business because I know what it's like to be successful professionally and be failing personally. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and that's one of the things that I've run into, Cledra, with financial coaching. Mm. Sometimes, you know, and I do a little business coaching, helping people to get to a place where they can really, truly see revenue growth in their businesses from a financial perspective, and then honing in on that in order to create the life that they want. Mm -hmm. And if you have a wall up in your personal life, sometimes you can't get over that wall to achieve the things in your professional life. And you wonder over and over again, or in your financial life rather, and you wonder over and over again, why you're not achieving these goals when you're doing all of the right things, it seems. And one of the things that I love about you is that you have systems and processes to this. Now, is this something that because you have that chemical engineering hat that, <laughs> that you were able to develop or was it a part of the, your process to be able to come up with this sort of formula or what have you for people? You know, I think it's both. I think it's what I've studied and, you know, my formal training is about looking at a process and identifying the inefficiencies. So I do yeah. have that training. Um, but then it's my life where all of those years in corporate, I had to be really, really efficient. At one point I covered from Maine to Arkansas. Mm. So I had to be really, really efficient. And so just in my journey of entrepreneurship, I found that uh, people have a lot of fluff in the way they do business. Yeah. And so you have to have a system, not only for your business, but for yourself, for your body, for your spirit, like everything needs to be in a process. Mm -hmm. Everything. I I agree. You know, Mm -hmm. when you talk about everything from the way you start your day, yes, to how you end it, to you, what are you eating, resting, you know, all of those things. Absolutely. Absolutely. The workout. Yeah. uh, Do you have a regimen? I think I saw a post where you were like going to work out. So yeah, tell us about your, your star (laughs) regimen, your process. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, you know, and the research shows that the um, top CEOs are as fit as an NFL quarterback. Mm. And so fitness and your ability to make high quality decisions go hand to hand. So for me, I always start my day with time with God. I Mm -hmm. read scripture, prayer, and then I go to the gym. So it's like the the water, the workout, the word. That's my (laughs) WWW mornings. And so, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's, that's how I set my day and before I allow different inputs of the world, Mm -hmm. you know, I decide what kind of day I'm going to have and instead of reacting. And then the other thing is I'm very strong on time blocking and not time blocking activities, but outcomes. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is, for example, my ladies who may be um, working on their social media strategy or something, it's not like post 10 times. It's, it's, like specifically, what are you going to do, you know, Mm -hmm. um, in, in the time frame, And so it's, it's having a system throughout your day. So, so that entrepreneurship doesn't feel exhausting. Right. And Mm -hmm. so all of these systems for you helping a person to get to their place of financial, uh, satisfaction, or what is it like that most of the clients that come to you are seeking? You know, the thing that they're seeking is that they, they don't have what they're seeking and the way they're doing it are two different things. So mm-hmm. what they're seeking is <laughs> um, a business. And, and I like to say that they have the components, but they're all in the wrong order. Okay. It's like if 
like baking a cake if you bake the cake and then crack the egg it's not that the egg didn't go with the cake but that's the wrong order and that's what i see <laughs> and that's why you <laughs> right and then that's why you're serving it and nobody wants it right so they're like oh i posted and i heard crickets or no one's buying my program or they bought it this month but not the the, the next month yeah and so they're seeking that you know if i use that metaphor the cake is the the great business but they mm -hmm. what they don't have is a system that they can where they can predict the outcome and predict their their um income right you know that's yeah. where i get my clients where you can, you're not like feast famine you know based on your numbers mm -hmm. so i love it so mm -hmm. when, you know i just when i just hear you talk about systems and when i think of systems i always think of smart goals because you know that is the uh s in smart goals so is that something that you focus on or is there any sort of thing that we are familiar with that you use as tools within your business or you can have you kind of created your own formulas my, I created my own, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, there are some foundational principles that everyone needs to be familiar with. You know, I'd be, you'd be surprised the number of women who don't have an actual business plan that actually hit to, to show them how they're going to hit their revenue goal. Yeah. You know, for the year, I don't mean just for the month. Mm -hmm. Like you see so much on social media, make 10 K in a month. Okay. So what, mm -hmm. you know, it's, how do you do it for the year? And then we reverse engineer that and say, then how are you going to do that for the quarter? Then how are you going to do it for the month? And then what does that mean that you need to do today? Right. So you're not waking up wondering what you're going to do. So the, the foundational principles of having a 12 month plan, having quarterly plans, having feedback loops around those and knowing, you know, I always say, and this is the geek nerd part of me <laughs> that the, that the math is the path. Yeah. that you have to know how many people you talk to that you convert. You mm -hmm. know, everyone has their custom conversion rate and you got to know that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't even think like that. They're just like, oh, I hit it. You know, that's why I don't go with this make 10K. No, what specifically do you need for your business model in your season of business, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. So you're kind of mm -hmm. like helping people to back into their success. So you, you have this vision or this, this desire or this goal or whatever you, people want to call it, but you don't have a plan. And so now from, from step to step to step, you can create that by sort of seeing what the bigger picture is, because many of us have an elephant sized view of what we see for our businesses but we don't have an elephant sized plan we have a <laughs> our That's plan right. is pebbles our plan is you know really day to day we're thinking not even thinking through our intentions our day and so exactly yeah exactly and not and you know thinking through intentions and also thinking through personality style mm -hmm. you know i'll have clients now like should i go on clubhouse like do you like clubhouse like mm -hmm. you, it's okay to do what you enjoy right versus what you see everyone else doing absolutely yeah you know? absolutely one of the things i love what you just said about that style because if you know let's talk about mental health for just a second because if you know that you're dealing with some things with your mental health, and we mm -hmm. all need to take moments to assess that, and mm -hmm. you know that in some seasons, as an entrepreneur, you know that in some seasons that you're not necessarily as gung-ho, whatever mm -hmm. the reason, maybe it was a parent that died mm -hmm. around that same time, or, you know, just whatever it is, mapping mm -hmm. out those times in your business to say, hey, I am preparing for them. That's the way that I try to think about my business mm -hmm. um and i and i want to ask you like when it comes to mental health mm -hmm. and systems and processes and what we were just talking about with people understanding their personality style is that also something that you think is significant like helping people with through systems and processes based on their mental um their mental health and and where they're going to be absolutely i mean that the taking care of your mind for an entrepreneur is more important than it is for the average person because yeah. we make so many new decisions every day. People with jobs, they're doing the repetitive nature of the job. Mm -hmm. We have new things every day and that fatigues the brain. And yeah. so I do heavy emphasis on emotional wellness. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this concept that I talk about um, called emotional poverty. 
-hmm. And emotional poverty is where you don't have the emotional fuel to drive the actions that you need for the outcomes that you want. And so you have to have a daily renewal of your mind, just Mm -hmm. like the word talks about, you know, not, but unfortunately, a lot of us will go really hard and we don't recognize we need renewal until we're about to crash. Yeah. Yeah. So we even implement a system of renewal daily. Mm Mm-hmm. Not just because the anniversary of the death of a parent is coming up. It's funny you mission and I'm, I'm drinking out of my dad's coffee mug today because today is the anniversary of his death. Oh, wow. And yes, exactly. And so it's, um, you know, and I'm having an event this weekend and, and people ask, well, how are you able to do that? And mm-hmm. so being able to hold space for both a time of grief, which it is for me today, and amazing things are happening in a day like being here with you. Yeah. So it can be you. an and. You know, yeah, it it can be an and you don't, you know, because that, but that's a skill. Yeah. I love, so I love that, um, that example. And I was saying, wow, because I didn't, I, you know, I didn't know that. You didn't talk about that. You didn't talk about that. So I don't want anybody to think like, oh, I set, we set that up. Like I had no idea that this was the anniversary of her dad's death. And so sorry for your loss. First of all, okay. But secondly, to be able to plummet through, because for some people, it is a time, whatever the situation, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever the loss, whatever the scenario, the memory, whatever, that can break them down. And as an entrepreneur, you're right, we do need to a different set of power tools often, because Mm -hmm. we have daily changes, daily ebbs and flow. Now, let's just talk about this pandemic for a second. You know, yeah. and the, <laughs> and any other crisis, the market crashing back in 2008, 2009, all of the different things that can happen. And as an entrepreneur, especially if you're trading time for money and you haven't gotten to an investment status, you know, where you have assets that are rolling and compounding, most entrepreneurs are still building and have right. to show up. You know, we're in that, Robert Kiyosaki calls it the S quadrant, self-employed, yeah. you know, yeah. where you're trading yeah. time for money not yeah. many of us have gotten over into the Warren Buffett status you know yeah. that's, that's <laughs> you know? true yeah yes. it, or even that B type business that's that other quadrant that he talks about where mm-hmm. you're beginning mm-hmm. to create residual so mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about that how do you pivot you talked about transforming your mind daily some of the intentions that you do mm-hmm. for entrepreneurs that maybe aren't as spiritual as you and I mm-hmm. what are some across the board things that you can tell them from a systematic and processes perspective to be able to renew that mindset daily and to move forward to be successful and scale their businesses. You know, in terms of how they pivot emotionally or do you mean that just in business? Like Overall, yeah, oh, emotion- overall. emotionally and professionally. You know, the thing that we all have to keep in mind as business owners, as much as we may be passionate about something, you have to see if there's a market demand. Yeah. You know, (laughs) that may seem elementary, but I meet so many people who are trying to offer something that there is no demand for for that, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and not being specific enough about where you are positioned um, in the marketplace. So I think when you're looking at, okay, where do I take my business? The first thing you need to look at is who do I enjoy serving? Like what transformation do I, what, what lights me up to, yeah. to create that transformation? Like it lights me up for women to go from dream to profit. I'm yeah. like, this thing used to just be a concept. And now this is a business. I love that. Yeah. And so I say that, but, and that's, there's a market demand. You know, you may love like water painting and you want to sell it, but you can't paint. No one wants it. (laughs) And so (laughs) there's probably a club for that, but not necessarily a business. (laughs) That's funny. So sometimes we mix up like there's some things I'm passionate about, but that doesn't mean, you know, and I'm I'm so like this kind of irks me. Every passion can't be monetized. Mm hmm. Because you have to do market analysis and see, is there a market demand? Now, can you create markets? Absolutely. But then you need to look, do you have the financial capital to know that this thing that has no market um, share right now? And that's going to take more time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying good. you can't create something that's never been done, but most of the pivot to pivot successfully, it needs to be um, more of a, um, an innovation as opposed to bottom line creation. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that, like Sarah Blakely with Spanx, she didn't create pantyhose. 
A right. lot of us were wearing that. She, you know, she, it was a, something that she was innovative about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and blew up everybody. And blew up. <laughs> yes. There's so many versions now. I love her story. That's exactly. a great example. Exactly. So just look at like, what can I, if you're looking at something like what, what, I always say that if you could see it, you're called to change it. Like if it mm. bothers you and you have that revelation about it, then that's, that's your thing. Yeah. If you wish it would be just a little different or a little better, then that's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. this pandemic and times like that for an entrepreneur, because the, the technical uh, definition of entrepreneur includes the word risk. And so it is, it's a mindset of saying, <laughs> I'm willing to kind of take a risk to jump over the abnorm or the, the, or the norm to do the not so normal, to be innovative, the, one of the words that you use, you know, in order to create something that's needed. And so one of the things that holds people back is fear. One of the, that holds people back so long is fear. And uh, one of the things that I love to encourage and inspire, and I think that's what I hear from you, is getting over that, using the mindset tools to get over that. And now you have this dream that you can actually evolve into profit. But going through some of those things, I think the systems and processes help get over fear. Am I wrong? You know, I believe that sometimes fear has to come along and then yeah. sometimes I can get over it. But sometimes it just has to ride in the back seat. Yeah, like, absolutely. I think it's like a toddler that's showing out for the day. Like, you know what? We're still going to church. So get yourself <laughs> together, but we're still going. Right. And sometimes you can't make them stop crying right away, but you keep going. Yeah. And that's what I think that sometimes it doesn't go away, but it's the ability to manage it while it's present like I, mm -hmm. i'd be lying to say that oh i'm just fearless and i never know oh, no. no what i what i've learned though is that every next level comes with your brain just freaking out <laughs> so now because i've done this so much that i know that oh okay that's a sign that i'm going to another level that's mm -hmm. just the response your mind has yeah. it's the human response to uncertainty and risk to your yeah. point yeah you yeah. know I love it's a that. natural response. So don't freak out. It actually means, oh, that means I'm taking my game up. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I love <laughs> that you talked about that fear sometimes has to stay in the back seat. And one of the things I'm sure you have a story too. Like I tell people all the time, they see me speaking, hosting shows, different things like that. And they believe that it just came natural to me. Like I was just born to do this. Right. And that statement born to do something. I think some things, yeah, people just naturally they did, but other mm -hmm. things you develop the skill and you do it. And for me, I had to develop the skill. Now I was always outgoing like a friend, right? Mm -hmm. To a lot of people, but yeah. I didn't do public speaking ever. I was yeah. always the kitchen help, I call it. Behind the scenes <laughs> working, half smiling. <laughs> You know, so networking and all the things I even teach and coach now, it's funny, I have the degrees for it. And I have the, mm -hmm. ex, you know, the experience, but I had to develop that experience by launching out to the deep in spite of fear. And yeah. even speaking, every time somebody invites me to speak, I say yes, I sweat. I don't even sweat normally. <laughs> but I <laughs> But I sweat and I just, you know what I'm saying? There are certain yeah. things that I know are going to happen. I just make sure I have a fan or something yeah. and I'm cold nature, but it's just, it's a part of me that will remain nervous or have some level of, Ooh, but I still do it and I show up and do my best. And I'm sure you have a story or something that you continue to push through. Absolutely. I call it a visibility hangover. Yeah. So if I, if I do something and it's a lot of visibility and a lot of attention mm -hmm. after I have to always watch it. Cause I want like cupcakes or something. Like I'll just want to eat and just hide <laughs> and just like, you know, <laughs> like <Get it>. you know, <laughs> because it's, it literally feels like I'm hungover for something. It's like a visibility. And I, I can't, I call it that. I know that I'm going to have a visibility hangover. It, it doesn't feel good. You feel so exposed yeah. because unlike selling for a job, when this is your work and it's your heart, you put so much into it. It's so personal. 
at -hmm. least it is for me. And, you know, over time I've learned that, okay, that I I don't try to hide that part of me. Like you'll hear women say, I don't care what people think. Well, I don't think that's healthy. I care what people think. I just don't care to the point that it it stops me Mm -hmm. because I never want to be in a mindset where I can't take feedback. Right. You know, Absolutely. because maybe what they're saying is right. Everything mm-hmm. people say about us is not wrong. Right. You know? And Absolutely. everyone's not hating on you, you know. And so <laughs> so it's you're right. we're not all hating on you. We're really trying to help you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes, so, thank you. Right. So I'm not the neck rolling. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I just will not let it stop me. However, I do know, like you said, you learn your own patterns through all of this. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for me now, you know, leading a network organization or, or, you know, doing something where people may comment, I don't always feel great about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll I'll always say, oh, why did I wear my hair like that? Or why, you know, (laughs) I'm so critical of myself. (laughs) Yeah, we all are, you know, yeah, we all are. And, and the thing is, is, even in that moving forward that's the thing like moving hair forward. may not be perfect all the time outfit you put it on and it adjusted by the time you exactly. got it to speak and it's like what what happened the shoes weren't quite as comfortable this time you know different exactly things. yeah but you still push forward you push forward and you learn how to t- also take care of yourself in yeah. that because as entrepreneurs we're bombarded with that on a regular basis and this is where that mental fatigue comes in if you don't have you know you talked about the beginning of my day but you also need to have a, a end of your day kind of sandwich yeah. your day yeah. with with taking care of your mind and your heart and your spirit um so you know at the end of my day it may be a candle it might be journaling some mm. of the things that are on my heart but yeah. we have to we have to empty that each day because the the cumulative effect would be too much emotionally. Yeah, I agree. And Mm -hmm. I actually feel like too, throughout the day, there are certain things. So, you know, I love uh, essential oils. And so throughout the day, I diffuse, not Mm -hmm. every day, I'm not going to act like I'm every day, just perfect, you know, (laughs) but I diffuse. And um, one of the things, you know, speaking of generations, just for a second, my daughter sometimes will remind me like, hey, let's, let's diffuse, let's put on Mm -hmm. some oils, you know, to Mm -hmm. create the Mm -hmm. atmosphere that we want for our day. And, and so I'm passing that along to her. But even right now, as we're talking, I have a lavender vanilla candle because that's the, I (laughs) (laughs) I yeah, but yeah. So just creating the space for what I needed for right now, you know, balance and sustenance and, you know, all of that. And so I, you know, I thank you for mentioning that. I love that. And one of the things that I tell people a lot of times throughout the day, have some sort of citrus smell around you because it it reinvigorates you and gives you a natural sort of energy that the Mm -hmm. coffee helps but that even setting your atmosphere does even more and I want to speak with I want you to speak really quickly you mentioned the networking group and so guys I got to share uh, we're not going to talk too much about this, but I got to share E-Women Network is a group that I joined um, two years ago, I want to say. Yes. And um, but she came over and at that time, it was a different managing director who I adore. She was mm-hmm. actually on the show, Dr. Mm-hmm. Lavelle. <laughs> and so now she's the new managing director for this area. And because we're virtual, we're actually tapping into a few different <laughs> locations right now. So that's kind of cool. I've seen some women like last week, a couple weeks ago we had Dr. Stevie Mills she's a part of it a couple yeah. other folks in my network Jocelyn McEldery yes. who will be on the show she's a dear friend she's a part of the praying CEO <laughs> group and so many others and so let's talk a, just for a minute about e-women network for anybody that's local that's a woman in business that would like to be a part of e-women network if you could just really quickly tell them what it's about and then we'll move back to talking about your amazingness. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Well, it'll help them because the mission of eWomen Network is to get 1 million women making 1 million in annual revenue. And specifically the Raleigh chapter, you know, we are growing. And what I want to say to you is networking should be a part of your system because if you haven't said nice to meet you at least 10 times in a week, it's yeah. something wrong. Business yeah. owners, you have to meet new women, new yeah. or men, you know, whatever your target market is, but it's all about expanding your network and also expanding who you are as a person. Absolutely. And you can't do that unless you're around other people who can sharpen you. 
Absolutely. And mm -hmm. that's what I think the, the circles, the wisdom circles, yes. um, all of those different things that eWomen Network provides is, is absolutely a tool to be able to do those things. And I echo you, a lot of the focus for coffee and collaborations over these past uh, three years has been about networking. I like to use two words to, to really describe networking, which is building relationships. Yes. Because people run from networking because it seems so intimidating. I ask people to reframe it and think of it from a, even a, a technical perspective. Networking in the computer terms is, inter, is, is cables that are interconnected. And I love so, that. <laughs> yeah, if we look at it from that perspective, it's interconnected, it's building relationships. That's actually what the coffee in Coffee and Collaborations represents. Getting back across the table, having a cup of coffee, tea, whatever, and building relationships to create uh, op opportunities to grow your revenue from making connections and collaborations. And so that's why Coffee and Collaborations. So if you could share with us as we close out now, you guys, uh, her website is coming up right now. And so anybody that has questions about eWomen Network, anybody that has questions about her business, anybody that has questions about anything, you can reach out to her. You already yes. have my information to reach out to me as well. Um, but we want to talk about, because we got to, we got to close at some point, right? And so okay. before we close, <laughs> we got to get some wisdom. We got to get some wisdom here. All right. So when it comes to leadership okay. and when it comes to finance, you're helping people to scale their businesses by mm -hmm. using different tools, systems, mm -hmm. processes, but also leadership to mm -hmm. be able to create the wealth that they want. Give us some kind of closing out tips from a leadership angle to that would help us to get to just a few tips, something that maybe people can implement today that will help them to begin the process to create some revenue. Maybe they need to step back and you know start over or whatever the tip is that mm -hmm. you would like to give just maybe three to five tips um and then we'll close out okay so the first tip i'll say is that you need to be the ceo of you personally mm. like leader of one starts with the person in the mirror like and 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 are you your transformation in other words, you should reflect what you say you deliver with your clients. Mm -hmm. So there should be some congruency there. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Like if you're working on finances and you're, you know, clean yours up and not that you got to be perfect, right. but you need to at least be in that position because the, the way that you take care of yourself, you will attract women who are on that same page. So yeah. people sometimes underestimate that the way they're showing up, like show up as the client you would want to yeah. receive. Yeah. You know? That's, I love that. that. That's the first tip. The other thing is get really clear about how much you want to work. Sometimes mm -hmm. people get into the activity and they don't think like, what am I really building? Mm -hmm. This is how women will build, like you were talking about that quadrant, a job that they don't really like. Yeah. Like my ultimate goal is to work two or three days a week. I'm not there, but get clear on how, not just the work and the money, but how do you want your weeks to go long-term, yeah. big mm -hmm. picture. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing that I would say, like, that's, those are two things you can do right now. And then the third thing is to look at your revenue goals based on your products and services. Like, have you done the math, Ooh, you know, have you done the math and do you know then what specific numbers, you know, and I'll, I'll throw in another one after you've done the math, then how can you get in front of enough women who need your product and service so that you can hit that number in a way that doesn't feel like a struggle. Yeah, absolutely. Like stop and think, where is she? Mm -hmm. What would she be doing today? And then how can you get in front of where she is? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You avatar. know, your avatar and be so clear on her and, and know and, and speak in her language. You know, and let me just say this, avoid the encouragement trap. That's what I call it on Facebook or social media, where all you're doing is pumping motivation because guess what? Motivation doesn't equal a credit card because I can get it anywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, if, if you are doing a lot of, you can do it girl and you got it. That's why people are confused about why they should pay you. Mm -hmm. They're like, thank you. I feel great. And, and that's how you can shift the encouragement trap is what I see a lot of women, especially, you know, I serve women who have a servant's heart. They're, they're mostly Christian and they can, <laughs> they can get into that pump you up type of posting. 
Yes. And you got to put your CEO hat in. You're taking these women through a transformation. Absolutely. Yes. Not just a feel good. And you wonder why she hadn't paid me. I posted these thousand quotes. <laughs> and she liked all of them. Yeah. yeah, because you're like the church. She can't tell the difference. Right. Oh, that was good. You know, I was there, Cleidra. I have been that. Me too. Yeah, I was, <laughs> that's why I'm like, yes, girl, yes. I was there. Like, I was that. So I love it that, you know, you've been there so you can speak to it. Yes. And, you've been there. And, and me, like, I wasn't even focused on the likes or anything. It was just like, I just wanted to make people feel good. But I was like, I started saying to myself, do people really truly understand what I do and who I yeah. am? And, you know, is that translating? Because I think that people should do an analysis of your businesses every 90 days. That's, that's my personal take, which equates to that year you're talking about backing into what it is that you want for the year ahead, month by month by month. Mm -hmm. But I think you and analyze it if you're not doing it every 30 days definitely a full analysis every 90 I do an analysis every 30 did I hit my goal blah 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 yes. and then you have smaller ones through the weeks but 90 I'm like okay what do I need to do because if this quarter I didn't achieve what I was supposed to am I taking it into the next quarter what am I doing and so in those processes I would say you know what that is time that I'm wasting like I'm spending all this time coming up with motivational quotes, motivation this, motivation that, when I could be spending that time intentionally coming up with things for my business that will translate into revenue and still motivate in the right way. Exactly. It's not, it, I'm glad you said that because I don't want this to be misinterpreted as, you know, stop the motivation, but yeah. it's, what I'm saying big picture is, do you have a strategy for the way you're posting? Absolutely. Is it strategic? Yeah, you know, or is it just random and how I feel for today? And that's what yeah. we do as girlfriends, what we feel. Yeah. You know, you're a business owner. Yeah, absolutely. I love yeah. it. Thank you so much. You guys, this has been great. I, I mean, I think it's been great. I hope you do too as well. You can absolutely give us some feedback and let us know your thoughts. Please reach out to Cleidra if she spoke to you and she can be of help or assistance to you in any way. I want to welcome all of you to eWomen Network who are women that are listening. Some of those tips that she gave absolutely across the board, men, you can also use. Don't, don't turn it away just because she was addressing women. Her target is women and she was doing the right thing by addressing women. But those apply to men as well. Those apply to everyone that's an entrepreneur that wants to grow from here today to another level tomorrow, or even the second from just a second ago. Cause I'm all about the seconds. Like I don't have to wait until tomorrow. I can do it today. And so make sure that you come back. First of all, share this broadcast with a friend. So if it spoke to you, all you gotta do is first of all subscribe hit that subscribe button on youtube hit that subscribe button on podbean and then also just share with someone another entrepreneur who could use the tools who could use the information to grow their business so many times we have access to information but we don't know what to do with that information and when you have people that say i've lived this i've been here before i have the tools and i can share with you on how to apply those tools so that you can grow exponentially you don't have to take three five six ten years to make a profit in your business those old rules are gone because when you collaborate when you are able to have a mentor, somebody like you can use this as mentorship time. Take these tools from Cleidra and be able to say, hey, you know, my mentor <laughs> shared with me, my mentor that I got through Coffee and Collaborations, the <laughs> Ultimate Fan Club podcast today, every week you can come and meet another mentor that will help you to grow your business. So thank you once again, Cleidra. Thank you. You're welcome. So we'll definitely be in the rooms together <laughs> more and more and more. But you all have an amazing Monday. Take today and as I always say, be a light. Once you decide to let your light shine, guess what? You're giving somebody else permission to do the same. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, just watch. Try it. We'll see you next time. Coffee and Collaborations Media presents the ultimate fan club podcast.